Hi and welcome to this DC Pool Web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to export a still image from a video clip using Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, so on my desktop, I've got this folder and inside this folder, I've got this one video clip. I downloaded that video clip from Pixabay. I'll put a link to that in the YouTube description. Let's open up Premiere and drag and drop the video clip onto the timeline. That will also import it into the media pool here. Let's just grab this handle and zoom in on this video clip, something like this. It will click here, right click, and we'll unlink it because I don't really want any audio as I'm demonstrating this video. So I can move across the timeline and what I want to do is take a still image, something like this, maybe a picture like this, and then import that into Photoshop to create a thumbnail for a YouTube video, for example. So if you're creating video content and you want to take a still image, this is a good way to do it in Premiere Pro. Let's double click, so left with your left mouse button, double click on this video clip and it will open up in the cutting tool here, the editor here for the video clip and it positions it in exactly the right position where you saw it over here or you can move this across and you can also use the arrow keys to move in small increments on the frames right you can move one frame at a time so let's just see where would be a, a good position to maybe create a thumbnail from so we can move across the timeline let's just say around around here right because we've got a nice space maybe to write something across the top and you've got this space here to work with in Photoshop so all we do is click on this little camera icon it says export frame or control shift and E is the shortcut key I'll click on that and it's going to ask me to give it a file name so I'm just going to I'm actually going to leave it as its default file name that's fine it's taking it from the video clip and applied the time and day and it's telling you it's this first still image so it's a good file name in the drop down you can select different file formats I prefer to use a PNG file because the quality is going to be better so we select PNG here and then we just need to browse to the directory where we want to save our work I'm going to save it in the same directory that's on the actual um, on the actual desktop and then we can click this option and this option says import into project so this same still image will get imported into the project as well this is kind of optional I'm going to leave it on to show you and then we'll click OK so here we can see this still image um, that we just generated this is just a still frame so if we delete this and drag in the still frame we have this PNG file now as a still image right typically you probably wouldn't do that but if you wanted to have a little intro in your video and you want to use a still image and then manipulate it you can do loads of things in um, in a Premiere Pro you could zoom in and do all sorts of things <clears throat> on this still image before your video plays right and you can take your video sequence and then drop that afterwards uh, here and then your video can play afterwards okay let's minimize this on my desktop I've got this folder inside this folder now I have this still image so I can go easily go and open up Photoshop and drag that into the canvas here it's 1920 by 1080 remember YouTube thumbnails are 1280 by 720 but you can easily create your thumbnail at 1920 by 1080 I suggest you do that um, and then you can just reduce the size just decrease it by 50% and then you'll have a good thumbnail for YouTube as well okay so you can add your text and do anything that you want to do in Photoshop so let's minimize this let's close this window that's how you go about taking a still image from a video and exporting it from Premiere Pro so you can import it into some other software you could use GIMP if you wanted to or you can use Adobe Photoshop to create your thumbnail I hope you find this tutorial useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial